Hey guys, Furum here, and today I'm going to be testing the Ferrari F12 TDF in multiplayer in Asphalt 9 for the second time, this time at 5 stars. I have maxed it as far as I can go with as many import parts and stuff that I have. This brings us to a rank of 3567. Now, my previous video on this car was at 3 stars, and it was very good then and extremely good in the slipstream season. I'm recording these races in the unbreakable slipstream season, which I will talk about a bit in this video, but I want to say right off the bat that this car is a very good car in any slipstream season, mainly due to its really good nitro efficiency, meaning that when you're in the front, you don't have to worry as much about people catching up to you, because remember, all slipstream does is it gives you nitro, it doesn't increase your speed. Therefore, if you're in front, always using nitro, you don't have to worry about cars of the same kind catching up to you. That's what this car does very good, it has one of the best nitro efficiency ratings in the game, especially at 5 stars. So now, let me explain to you guys exactly how I feel about this season, because it's a bit of a weird one, and let me explain that. So when the season started, I was thinking this was going to be amazing. And yes, it actually was, at least for a while, because the thing is, Slipstream is a fun concept, at least in my opinion, but the problem was with the previous Slipstream seasons is that they would lead to a lot of knockdowns, because everybody was in Shockwave, and if you went out of Shockwave, you'd get knocked down if anybody just touched you. So yeah. I wanted a no knockdown slipstream season, and that's what this is. And I do still think it's better than previous slipstream seasons because I haven't had as many rage moments from the season as I have in previous ones because of the fact that, well, you can't get knocked down, which is great except for one thing. The problem comes when you are behind a group of cars that are all together and one of them hits something, then the other one hits him from behind, slows down a bunch, and then you hit them from behind, slow down a bunch, and no matter if you're in shockwave or not, you can't get around anybody if there's a big group of people just kind of going slowly because one person in the front hit something or whatever. You guys probably know what I mean if you've played in this season. It's probably happened. It has happened a bit to me. This is why it's not a good idea in this season to get behind in the beginning because that will most likely happen if you're not very skilled at getting around people, which I happen to not be. So yes, if you can stay in front for as long as possible, that's great because then somebody catches up to you, hits you from behind with shockwave, they can't knock you down. So those are my thoughts about this season. Here we come in first place and go up a good 44 rating. Now, I got to Legend League in this car and the Aventador SV, so what you're going to be seeing in this video is a compilation of some of the best races on my way to Legend League in this car. And in one of the races in this video, we will reach there. This here is a situation I don't like to be in, being behind a bunch of people, then getting stuck behind them and finding it difficult to pass them because they're all bunched up and yeah, you can see here the problem with this season. Would I still take this over the regular slipstream season? Yes. I'm not really sure how they could fix this problem other than having a slipstream season with ghosting or something, which isn't something that they've done so far, but a lot of people in the community really do want to see it. And I don't know, I think it would be neat to try and maybe have a ghosting slipstream season as well, just to see, you know, the ramifications of that. Because the thing is, people didn't really think about this specific problem with the unbreakable slipstream season. They just thought, okay, well, we can't get knocked down. That makes everything so much better. That's exactly what I thought. I did not see this problem coming. With most different kinds of seasons, there are sorts of little problems that we don't really see until we try them. See there, I probably would have knocked that guy down if it had not been an unbreakable season. So yeah, sometimes the unbreakable thing can work not in your favor. But I do manage to pass him on this jump because I was riding his shockwave and he had to flat spin to get more nitro and I didn't. So I am now ahead of him. However, not by much. So it being said that there are little problems in each of the special seasons, we should just play through them, figure out what those problems are, and then report them to Gameloft and not just get upset every single season because there's always something that's going wrong. 
there usually will be something that goes wrong or is not exactly how we thought it would be simply because we hadn't tested it. And testing with eight people in a race sure is a lot more accurate than just theoretical testing. I don't know exactly how Gameloft does it, but you know what I mean. I just think it is important to test new things and give feedback for them certainly so that they can make them better in the future and not just go on about how horrible it is. So maybe in the future we will get a ghosting season and who knows? Maybe there will be some sort of weird problem with that one too. There's no way to know until it comes. So here we are coming up to the end of this race here, just behind this guy, just like we were on the previous lap. Honestly, this ending here is a whole lot like it was on the previous lap, but he is a bit further ahead. And yeah, I caught up to him right here again, hit him from behind. Yeah, I was not able to pass him because he was still in Nitro and we come in right behind him and we still go up a lot, making it to 1600 rating. Now in this race, we're facing two other Legions United members. We've got three other F12 TDFs, two Iconas, one Aventador, and one 488 GTB. This is one of those tracks where everybody bumps into each other at the beginning, and because nobody gets knocked down, those in the back get really slowed down a lot. But to be honest, I'd rather have this than knockdowns, because usually what would happen is I'd be the only one who'd get knocked down, and everybody else would get away fine. At least that's what it seemed like, so I'm okay with that happening once in a while. So now I want to tell you about something a little bit odd. So you guys remember when I made my video about that Sheeran Cup, and well, of course, I didn't get top 10. I ended up at like 49 position or something like that but anyway somebody in the club i was in unkindly track 31 managed to get top 10 so all the members of legions united second club including myself got that decal that was a nice barrel right there and i applied the decal to the sheeran but for some reason whenever i go out on the track either in multiplayer or events or anything it simply doesn't show up. Like, the car is just, like, stock colors. I thought about making another Sheeran video sometime and showing what that decal is like, but now it doesn't look like I can until I get that fixed. So I'm going to see if Gameloft can do anything about that, because there's no point winning a decal that you can't use. So after a bit of a fight at the end of the first lap, the second lap passes uneventfully and we come in first position ahead of those other F12 TDFs and those two Icona Titaniums, which by the way, I have five starred and I have upgraded all the way and I've had some pretty close races and intense ones with some Sheerans. So you can expect a five star Icona video coming sometime as well, probably sometime soon because Let's just say there's some amazing stuff in there. In this race, we are facing two other F12 TDFs. This is a race of just three people. Unfortunately, I don't know what rank their cars were at because I got a bit excited at the end of this race and forgot to even click on race details. So yeah, why was I excited you might ask? Well, you'll see at the end of this race. So we have this one guy, GT Sasuk or something like that, who was on my tail throughout a lot of this race. And while it's easier to be in front in the F12 TDF than in another car because of its long-lasting nitro efficiency and therefore people slipstreaming behind you does not allow them to catch up as often as they would in another car if you had less nitro efficiency because they'd have more, you know what I mean. Anyways, we cross into the second lap with him right on our tail and considering that he caught up and nearly passed us on the first lap made me not exactly the most confident about the second lap because he was further behind me at this point in the first lap. So I knew this was going to be a close one. In some other news about the F12 TDF, Fury Lewis Hamilton, a fellow member of Legions United, made a video comparing the F12 TDF to the SCG. And let's just say results weren't exactly what I was suspecting, given that the SCG was nerfed quite a bit, at least in terms of the Nitro mostly. Also, the handling a little bit means it's not exactly the ultimate B-Class King that it used to be. And go watch that video if you want to see exactly how it performs against this car. So here we are right neck and neck with him right here, like literally right next to each other. Thankfully, I'm able to shockwave past him at the end because he drifted and I did not have to and thus we cross the finish line in first place and that's good too because we are able to get to legend league in this race and that's why i forgot to click on race details so now for a final race in the video in which we are facing two other f12 tdfs again another three f12 tdf race now it's time for me to give my general review about this car as you can see in this video it is quite popular blueprints for this car were given out in the club seasons as well as in the multiplayer legend league packs and probably some of the lower packs as well that's how i managed to five star mine and that's how everybody who has theirs managed to star up theirs as well not sure how many people 
will have them five star, but it's good even at like three star. Go watch my video about it at three star if you'd like to see how it performs down there. Now, the thing is, it is extremely good in slipstream season due to its really good nitro efficiency. I've already explained why that's the case. And to be honest, it would probably be good in any season. It is quite an easy car to drive, except for being quite stiff on the handling. But really, this nitro efficiency makes it just really easy to stay at top speed almost all the time, except on really, really twisty tracks, in which you might have a bit of a problem due to the bad drifting. But overall, it's just a great car that can compete really well with the other high and B-Class cars, especially after they've been nerfed. We'll have to see how it does against the Sin R1. I don't have that car yet, but some people do, and I'm interested to see how it compares to that. And we come in first place. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt 8 and 9 content. See you later!